When you... you can start. All right, Mr. Belisco, thank you very much for coming all the way from Israel to show us and to teach us about kebab. We are very honored to have you here. Um, since you are here, we also have some uh, questions concerning kebab uh, to get a little bit more inside information. And actually, my first question will be uh, if you could explain us what does kebab mean? Well, first of all, thank you that you invited me to Holland the second time. Thank you. I'm happy for that. I mean that uh, we are serious people here. <laughs> okay. Kebab means, first of all, uh, it's a short name of Krav Panim and Panim. In Hebrew, it's a short name. Same like uh, uh, Kamag is a Krav Maga. Okay. Kebab is 100% pure self-defense. And this is what uh, uh, my father and his friend, and his friend before, 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 does and teach uh, uh, before his independence. But Kapab starts before a long, long time, and the time of the Turkish Ottoman was easy. We're talking about the war, war one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the system was, belong to the virus that was in that time. So against the Turkish, there was that and that and that uh, uh, weapons, okay? But today, Kapab is very, very uh, uh, effective to all the weapons that we have in the streets and also against the many, many techniques of the new martial arts that come to the street. Before, it was for classical box, judo, maybe, maybe jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. But today, there is so a lot of martial arts that we have a uh, fine solution for them and Kapab. That is the solution. Yeah. All right. So it's actually based on self-defense from the earlier days, where people have to fight for regimes and stuff like that. Yeah. That's how Kapov uh, developed. Um, we know that uh, your father is a very important uh, person in the story of Kapov. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually the founder. Could you tell us a little bit, a bit more about what he really meant with Kapov? Well, my father, what he does, it was before his independence. And all the time that he said to me that now nah, that time was finished, now we have a country, we have everything, we don't need Kapa. Mm -hmm. So after many years that I tried and I was learning another martial art and more and more and more and more, and one day he came and said, you know, Moshe, this is not enough. But I see today many, many, many techniques are, are very, very uh, uh, dangerous. So we have to discover Kapa to the world and we show him what we have and we change a few techniques inside and show more and more and more and to develop Kapab all over the world. Also in Israel, I mean the army, I mean the station unit, I mean the police, I mean the SWAT and the other. Alright, this actually basically comes from the fact that your father already used Kapab yeah. to a certain level where Israel was independent. So they thought, okay, it's not needed anymore. But uh, violence grew, so you, uh, your father started to think again, actually you still need it and it's because crime is getting bigger every day. Mm -hmm. So he started, uh, he gave you the assignment to start it up again, to yeah. rediscover it and to, well, to continue with it actually. Yes. That's very nice. That's you also talked about uh, Krav Maga and um, Kapap in, just before. Mm -hmm. Could you tell, is there a difference in it? And if there is a difference, what is the difference actually? Okay. First of all, the kebab is a mother art of Krav Maga. When uh, Mr. Emil Lichtenfeld, that he was in Israel, he first of all teach kebab. Mm -hmm. He teach kebab. After he became the chief instructor of our army, he changed the kebab, he take out many, many techniques, and he leave all from the Krav Maga. And he changed all of the name from kebab to Kamaga, mm -hmm. from Krav Panim and Panim to Krav Maga. But also, when Emil left the army and he go to the uh, civilian and he opened his dojo, he takes many, many techniques outside and he, he leaves only the technique that he can teach a uh, civilian. Not the army, That's not the uh, swords, not anybody there. And this Kapap, in this Krav Maga, you can see also in Europe today, in America today, Krav Maga and, for, and uh, uh, just for civilian. Also, something else. Kapap is a self defense. Mm -hmm. Krav Maga is self defense, but Today, because it's not so dangerous, <clears throat> it's good for competition. So Krav Maga have competition, have also a, 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 like a gym, gymnastics that people do not in Kapab. Kapab, if you win, you get your life. You don't get any medal or any truth. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, 
All right. Okay. So the, basically, the difference is, is it comes from the same uh, basis. Yeah. So the background is all self defense. Oh, yeah. But Kapap is developed really for self defense, so mm -hmm. also on a professional level. Oh, yeah. And Krav Maga is uh, developed to teach people and to, for civilians mostly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to yeah, maybe for shows, maybe for also for self defense, oh, yeah. but not on a higher level. It doesn't really no have a purpose in that way that it happens in its life. So. Mm -hmm. Right, it's very nice to hear. Well, um, you have been busy with the Pop story for a very long time. Already it started in Israel, um, but you have also different countries in the world where you're um, busy with the Pop story. Um, how did it develop throughout the world? Well, I can tell you, this is the name of my father. Mm -hmm. I take the Kapap and I, I discover it is Israel and I discover the system all over the world. Now today we have 26 countries that work uh, on our Kapap organization. And we are the only one that is teaching Israel. Mm -hmm. There is also our friend, the name is Haim. <coughs> Haim so he teach Kapap Krav Maga. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the real Kapap in Israel, Haim teach and I teach also. Uh, what I try, I said before, is it was a dream of my father and I developed Kapap and I put Kapap all over the place I can go. America, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, every place the people invited me, mm -hmm. we like to see real Kappa, I came and I teach and I show All right, well, it's a very nice uh, purpose to uh, spread the <coughs> word about Kappa, of course. Thank you um, much. Well, next to the, the different countries which you mentioned just right now, you also have the Netherlands. And together with uh, that, with Kamp, you are yeah. trying to uh, get the Kappa story here in the Netherlands uh, going and to teach everybody about it. <coughs> Um, what's the, uh, your relationship between Fred Wittkamp and, well, you? Okay. Fred, first of all, is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, one man that I meet here in Holland. I see a special man that likes Israel, loves Israel, and loves the Israeli system. The of, system. Yeah, the Kapap system. So when I he started to teach here in Holland, he was great. And because of that, he developed Kapap here. And I give him also our organization him to be one of the five master teachers outside of Israel. Fred is uh, here in Holland, there is another one in Italy, another one in France, one in uh, LA, in USA, one in Guatemala, and that's it. So Fred make a very good job, he teach serious, he teach the system, nice and good here. Because of that, we appreciate it and we develop the capacity together here in Holland, my yeah. teammate, nice job for me. Alright, so you actually have only a few people who are, uh, well, master masters teachers. of Kapap, they yeah. are master teachers of Kapap, mm -hmm. and Fred is one of them, and his, um, well, j job or task, however you want to call it, is actually to spread the word of Kapap here in the Netherlands, yeah. and he does that by uh, getting new information, new um, input from you, which he can spread again around uh, yeah, in the Netherlands, actually. Sure. Uh, now I try to, to, to push more uh, Fred outside of Holland also to teach in Norway, in Sweden, uh, in the, the north of Europe, uh, All right. in Scandinavia. All right. And I think that he will make a lot of job and very good job there. Alright, yeah. well that's good to know. Thank well, um, of course he uh, has more plans probably with the Netherlands, I think you have, will have more plans. Uh, what is the goal for the Netherlands concerning a pop? What could you do more? I think if we have more instructor in Kapap and Fred will teach them, and I come every year or every two years that develop more and more and more in Kapap, that I think that in the schools, mm -hmm. in the streets, people know Kapap, people understand the meaning of Kapap, they understood that, you know, we said something, in the, uh, our training, we get, make, make it more and more hard. If you feel pain, it's all it's pain. So it gives you something that, listen, if it's pain now in the training, what's going to happen if you're weak for real? Yeah. So people understand that, and people behave more uh, behavior and you find, and you know, people don't have to love each other, but to be more respectful. All right, and more uh, responsible, most yeah. probably. Yeah, sure. All right, well, that's a very good meaning to uh, let people be aware of Kapap and mm -hmm. uh, to show them that if you that you have to practice it as well because the crime, of course, is going very high and there is much more crime than there, there used to be. Mm -hmm. And Kapap could be a solution for that indeed. Um, what is um, your wish in the world to develop with Kapap? What do you want people to think about when they think about Kapap? Oh, 
this is by the name of my father and I do my job, I do that good. Mm -hmm. I try, I try, I see I do that good. And I would like, I try to develop the like path all over the world. Yeah. Every place that you want, I come, I teach, I show in the system that the people understood that they have something very good, something fresh, something for real self-defense. Because you need self-defense not just in the street. Self-defense is also at home, also in the elevator, also in your car, also yeah. in your shop, also in the mall, and you know what? Also in the school. Yeah. You, we need self-defense if the people know that your neighbor knows that you are in martial arts, in the Israeli system, in the more compact understood that you are serious people, yeah. that he cannot uh, uh, make anything bad for you. And also the other place, he know and you know, everybody know, they have more respect, more respect each other. Alright, well that's very nice. So if I can uh, conclude the story with is that uh, you want to have the Kapap story more integrated in people's lives, because crime is getting more evident here. Okay. And if people start to uh, work with the pop, and if everybody uh, understands the meaning of the pop and works with the pop, you eventually create respect because everybody knows from each other that they are serious with uh, with self defense. Mm -hmm. That's a very nice gesture, and I think uh, we can uh, all work with it. We have uh, a long way to go, but we yeah. have a lot to, to learn, and we are very glad to be here with the pop. I'm still student. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. So nice it was nice. Thank you. 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 Thank